uh, landlord tip of the day. So uh, I'll dive into that. And, and I talked about uh, a couple of shows ago, you know, if you're buying a property that has a tenant in it, they, they used to be a huge asset. Now it is potentially a larger risk if uh, in this climate we can't evict that person or they might not be a paying person that uh, you really can't do much with or you have to cut a check to get them to leave. But that kind of leads me to, um, you know, at landlord verifications. Um, I have a client that hired us to manage their a three flat, they're in the process of buying and it comes with two, two tenants in there. And what we're actually doing is we're getting, you know, they sent over proof of rent. Uh, so the tenants were in month to month and they had no leases that existed. So that was the first red flag for, for me for trying to protect this buyer from what he's buying. And uh, so that was the first red flag. There's no lease. Then the next, um, we asked for proof of rent. So they basically took a bunch of receipts, wrote them out and sent those over, which we all know anybody could make those up. So that was the second red flag. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm asking to provide some sort of cash flow uh, uh, money trail, uh, basically from the seller to the landlord, or even if it's just the landlord putting that exact amount of cash based on the days they told us to depositing it, because we don't want to get in the situation where this uh, investor closes on the property and then he has to turn around and cut a couple of checks for him. So, I, we talked about that in a previous show. That's a current situation I have. But when you're doing landlord ver verifications, for us as a property manager, yes, we call up and, and verify um, the landlord and, and talk to them. And when it's not a, an apartment complex, I almost think it's a waste of, a, of, uh, of time uh, to do that because the person applying can put pretty much anybody's name on there, anybody's number on there, and then uh, and tell them exactly what to say. So uh, we do that because it's just what's always been done. But the more important step, the second step to that is we do ask for um, a paper trail. It used to be cleared rent checks. Now a lot more, it's uh, uh, the money orders or uh, you know, some sort of electronic payment transfers, uh, quick pays. But we ask for that for all of our applicants to show that the last three months, there's actually money flowing from them to the landlord in the amount that they want on the days that they want. Now with electronic payments these days, it's even better because a clear check, you had to really go off of when the landlord deposited that check. And, and they always had the excuse of if they're paying late, the landlord deposited late. But now with uh, electronic checks or electronic payments like Chase, you could see exactly what date they're paying on because it's usually real time. So, you know, landlord verification, you know, in short of a, unless it's an apartment complex, it, it could be potentially uh, um, BS. So I always kind of create that money trail so you could see proof of rent payment for new tenants that have coming into your units.